we're going to sew up a pattern that's 84 years old. It was made in 1939. Can you believe it? The cool thing about these vintage patterns is that you get to time travel and make this cool style. It's impossible to find clothes from the 1930s. Even if you're at a true vintage store, they basically don't exist. So the cool thing about this is that we get to sew it up and have a dress from 1939. When I'm sewing up a vintage pattern, I really like to imagine the woman. What was she like? What was her sewing machine like? What kind of buttons and zippers was she using? And just what was life like back then, right? So you really get to put yourself in that time period while you're creating this vintage garment. I even like to stay true to the fabrics that they're showing on the front of the envelope or in the directions on the back. And today we're going to be using a stripe, a little different, but similar to the dress here on the right. The strange and interesting thing about this pattern is that there's no markings on it. It's just full of holes, like a moth got to it, for all of our markings. I am so excited to sew up this dress from the 1930s, and I know we're going to run into some sewing problems or issues or how do the pattern pieces go together exactly. And I'm also going to be adding modern sewing techniques to this. So, you know, I'm going to be using the serge and having finished edges and modern hems and all kinds of other things. So let's dive into this project and create this dress. The first thing we're gonna do is cut out our fabric, but since this pattern is so old, almost 100 years old, I do not wanna risk destroying it while I'm cutting out the fabric. So a great thing to do is trace it out on some paper, and then you can put all of your markings on here. So you can see right where those perforated holes were on my pattern, I marked them on this paper. And I know that these were pleat lines to line up, so I went ahead and drew the lines so that way I can transfer those to my fabric later. I have my first pattern piece down and I'm ready to start cutting out. So let's take a look at the pattern pieces I have cut out because I did modify a few of them. Let's go over the version that I'm cutting out as well. So I cut out the short sleeve version. So you can see that I'm doing this version right here with the sleeves that are short. And you'll also notice that my skirt is a little shorter. So I held this up to me and it was to my ankles. So I made it Anastasia length. So that's the great thing about sewing your own wardrobe. You can choose that length you want. And then notice how I lined up the stripes on the back here. Back bodice, back skirt, stripes line up beautifully even though they're wibbly wibbly all the way down. And then next over here, we have a very interesting piece. So when we open this up, kind of looks like fire, flames almost, especially with this fabric. So these right here are going to be our pleats that we're going to end up creating for the front of the dress, which is going to be this part right here. You can really see it in the solid brown one here. They kind of blend in with the stripes, but they make it nice and fitted on the top, and then it flares out at the bottom. And then up here, we've got the front bodice. So we cut that out so that the stripe is parallel with the straight edge of the fabric, but when you wear it and it folds back, it's going to create a really cool diagonal stripe. So that's gonna be just beautiful when it's on. The first thing we wanna do is mark and sew our darts. So now we gotta find them on the pattern. We gotta look for all the holes that make up the darts. So in new modern patterns, you would see the dart printed out on the pattern. You would have the words on here that would say this is center back, but this one is indicating it with all of these punch holes. So these three dots back here means that this is center back. The dart here is indicated by these four dots and then the dart tip right here. So what we want to do is draw in the dart tip always. And then you can mark all four of these. I'm just going to mark the top two because that's all I need for my dart to be created. But if you want, go ahead, draw on all four of those. And then you're going to have your mark here for the dart. And if you like, you can draw it in with your ruler. And then you just need to sew up all those darts. So I'm going to go over the pattern and mark up all of my darts and pleats. So that way we can sit down and start sewing. So marking all these pleats is really interesting. So I've got to mark all the dots down here, all the dots up here. And then I know exactly where to bring them together. Doesn't my fire mountain pattern piece look so cool? I love it. I'm so intrigued to see how this is going to turn out. So I've marked all my little pleat spots with all of these little dots that you see. So now I gotta go through and I gotta line up all of these dots. So we got a little bit of work ahead of us. 
And all of these really sharp angles that you're seeing are going to end up lining up really nice, creating one really smooth angle. The cool thing about these vintage patterns is that you don't see a lot of these things in the modern patterns or not to this extreme level. So this is really fun to see. I'm gonna sew up all my darts and if you need help sewing up darts, make sure you check out my video on that. But these pleats down here are super interesting. So I'm gonna go over pinning up these really cool pleats and sewing them down. So I'm gonna start with my center pleat here first. So what we wanna do is line up dots. So I'm gonna go ahead and find the dots. I'm gonna put the pin through one dot and get it to go through the other dot on the other side and just go through the fabric. And now I'm gonna go over here to the next set of dots going down center front and line up my pin going through both of the dots. So it's going to be important that these stay nice and straight and they're not twisted at all. And it's kind of nice that we have a stripe because I can help keep it straight, but it's also a wavy stripe, so it's not perfectly straight stripe. Um, but maybe that works out in our favor in the end, we'll see. So now what we're gonna do is move on to the next set of them. So we are basically just working our way through these sets of pleats here. There we go, we have all of the pleats pinned up. You can really see how it's creating the volume at the bottom of the skirt. This is just beautiful. So to sew up these super cool pleats, we are gonna start at the top dot, and then we're gonna backstitch, and we're gonna sew all the way down to the next dot and backstitch. So we don't sew all the way down to the bottom of the fabric, we just sew from dot to dot. So let's go sew up all these pleats and darts and see what we have after that. This is super exciting to see how this is going to turn out. Let's get pleating. And now we're finished with all of our pleats. Check it out. Our flaming skirt is looking even more flamey looking. So I don't really know what the heck is going on here. And I don't have the pattern instruction sheet to look at it because the pattern is over 80 years old. Somehow it got lost. What do you know, right? Um, so I was just following the dots on the pattern, but something definitely looks a little off. These points are so weird looking and it should not look like this. So something has happened. But we're just gonna keep going and see what happens. So next, we're going to add a modern sewing technique to this pattern. So the edges are fraying like crazy and I want this dress to last, so I'm gonna be surging my edges. Now this vintage pattern probably had you pinking the edges, you could have bias bound them, you could have folded the edge over once and sewn it down. So if you wanna use some vintage sewing techniques, you know, you always can. But I love the modern sewing techniques. They make everything so nice crisp and clean. So I'm gonna sit down at the serger and serge all my pieces. So everything is all serged up now. We have nice clean edges, so it's not gonna fall apart while we're sewing it up because this fabric is fraying like crazy. But I also noticed when I was serging that the side seam of the shirt was making this funny little shape here. And I was like, that's not right, that's weird. That looks like there should be a dart there. Well, what do you know? There's totally a dart here on the front bodice at the side seam. So I went ahead and marked it and I sewed up the darts at the side seam here for the front bodice. So these patterns without printed anything on them can be a little confusing. I even missed a dart. Let's hope I didn't miss anything else going forward because it's really time to start putting this together and making it turn into a dress. The next step is going to be sewing the back waist together before we put in the zipper. So you'll notice that the back waist skirt is shorter than the back waist of the bodice. So I have looked at this pattern over and over again, looked at the sketches, and there's not supposed to be any back waist darts in the bodice. So I'm assuming that it just wants us to gather this up a little bit and sew those two together because the dress does kind of have a blousey effect to it. So if we look at it, it does have some gathers right here and it does have a belt on, so it's hard to tell. But if we look at the sketch here for the back of the dress, it blouses out at the sides and there's no indication of darts or pleats there. So we're gonna go ahead and gather the back bodice up a little bit and sew it into the back waist of the skirt. Okay, so I'm gonna put in the basting stitches for my bodice. So I'm just gonna be running one row of basting stitches along the bottom edge of the bodice. And 
and that's all we needed to do. And now what we're gonna do is pin it to the waist of the skirt. So I'm going to be pulling one of my threads on the basting stitch and just lightly gathering this up. It's not gonna be a ton of gathers, but it's just enough to cinch it up to make it fit into the skirt. And once I have it roughly cinched up, so that way they are the same size, I'm going to flip them right sides together and then I can work on pinning them together. Okay, now that we have these two lined up and together, it's time to sew them together with a regular stitch. So if you ever have something that doesn't fit together, you can always gather one side and make it fit. And now we are done with that step. So we have our gathers in the bodice here. So you can see it's not gathered a ton, but just enough to create some shape because gathers take it in and create some volume. Um, so next what we need to do is put in our invisible zipper up center back. And if you need help putting in an invisible zipper in, make sure you check out my video on that. Now we have the zipper in, we just need to sew up the bottom of the skirt below the zipper. We did it, we got the back complete. So we've got our invisible zipper in and our gathers in the waist. And I am loving how these stripes are turning out. What do you guys think? Leave it down below. The invisible zipper at center back here lined up so amazingly beautiful. Just look at how it's still following the same pattern, but yet we've got that invisible zipper right in there. That was an absolute happy, happy accident. I didn't even purposely try to do that. Now we're on to the scary front of that dress where we kind of had that really bizarre piece that looked like fire. Remember uh, fire, we're gonna call it fire skirt. So now we have to do is tackle the fire skirt here and get it into the front of the bodice. So what we need to do is sew up some sections so that way we can fit the flaming front skirt into the bodice. So if we go down here, we're gonna notice these dots on the front, so many dots, so confusing, right? Okay, so the skirt sews up to a point. We need to know where to stop sewing. So this dot right here is where we stop sewing. So we're gonna sew from the bottom waist up to that dot on the front bodice. And then our facing piece, you'll notice it fits real nice right in here. And you'll also notice that these two dots line up on the facing and on the front bodice. So on the facing piece, we're going to be sewing up from the bottom of the facing to that dot. So now the tricky part. We need to get these bodice pieces into this front skirt down here. So we can kind of see how they're gonna fit. So the bottom of the bodice edge is gonna go here, and then we are going to sew up into the flames here. So now if we take a look at our bodice front pattern, you're going to notice a dot here. Now this is where the seam should stop for the point of the skirt here. So that means it's going to sew up to that point just like this. So if I lay this pattern on the fabric, you can see how we're going to be sewing this. So we're gonna sew over and up to that point, And we're also gonna do that on the other side with the other side of the bodice, making sure we're sewing over and then up to the point. Now this is gonna be tricky. We have a right angle in here and then we have a point up here. This is the nerve wracking part of this dress because we do not want to mess this up and it is so precise sewing these angles and points and I'm working with a delicate silk so we really need to be careful when we are sewing this so cross your fingers for me. Okay guys, so I was over at the sewing machine, was about to sew Fire Mountain down here and I'm just not feeling good about it. You know, I feel like it's not supposed to be like this. I know it's not supposed to be like that but what am I supposed to do? How is it supposed to look? Well. Hello, it came to me, it was a miracle. I figured it out. So I'm gonna go over exactly what we need to do on the paper pattern, because I folded it on the paper to double check it, and then we can fix it. So I took the fire mountain here, and I folded it how I thought it was supposed to look, because I know it's supposed to be this nice, smooth line. And well, what do you know? These lines that are on here for the pleats, they do line up. They are pleated a little bit differently than I had them originally pleated. So there's where I went wrong. My pleat lines were not lining up with the right pleat lines. Oh, mm, mm. oh my God, I am not seam ripping silk 4,000 stitches. So I'm just gonna recut out this skirt and sew back up those pleats and then we can sew up the bodice. I'll be right back. 
I did it, it worked, finally. I sewed these pleats right, we got rid of Fire Mountain and just turned it into a mountain. So now you can see how the pleats have come together and they all lined up. So remember what it looked like before? It did not look very good before. It looked like Fire Mountain completely. Um, and I knew something was wrong. So this is what it's supposed to look like. I can't believe I made that mistake with the pleats, but we all make mistakes, right? So no big deal, brush it off the shoulder and let's continue. This is what I've learned over all the years is that sometimes you make mistakes and that's how you learn, right? If you weren't making mistakes, you probably aren't learning. Now, finally, we get to sew the bodice together. Whew, it's getting hot in here, for real. <laughs> Now we get to the corner, we have to stop, lift up our foot, and we gotta snip right into the corner, which is always the scary stuff. And then we are going to turn everything. Back stitch and cut, let's cross our fingers and take a look at this. Oh my God, it's working and it's looking like the picture. Oh, I'm just loving this. I'm gonna sew up the other side now. Okay, back stitch cut and let's take a look. Look at this, we have the front bodice sewn in here and this is looking so interesting and I'm just loving all these lines and everything that's happening. I cannot wait to try this on. So let's keep sewing because it's the only way we are gonna get to try this on. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I think all the scary stuff's done, maybe minus that facing, but we'll get there. So next I'm gonna sew up the shoulders, I'm gonna set in the sleeve, and then I'm going to sew up the side seam and the underarm. I feel like that stuff's easy peasy. So right sides together. Something else that's very interesting is look at how much bigger the front skirt is compared to the back. Now the back looks like it's gonna fit just fine, but the front is looking kind of large for me, but maybe it's an optical illusion with the stripes. I guess we are just going to have to wait and find out when we try it on. So I basted up my sleeve to gather it up a little at the top, and now I'm gonna keep my edges lined up so I can get my cute little puff sleeve in there. Now that I'm done with this sleeve, I'm gonna move on to the next one. Okay, Houston, we have a problem. So this dress, I'm loving it how it's turning out so far, but not loving how it's fitting. So there are literally just like inches of fabric in here in the sides and I'm thinking maybe this dress was intended to be a little bit blousey but I can't tell from the pictures or the sketches because those look really fitted but we all know that that sketch or the picture of a garment on the front of a pattern is almost never how it turns out right but we are going to make this dress just how it looks on the front of that pattern so i'm going to put the dress on the dress form and we're going to tailor it up through the side seams okay so i'm going to take the dress and i'm going to line up the waist seam here and i'm going to make it fit the dress form because the dress form is roughly my size so I know if I make it fit the dress form, then it is going to fit me. So I'm gonna pin up both sides and then I'm gonna sew it up right where those pins are. So that way I know it's going to fit me better. Now the interesting thing about this is that you'll notice the front has way more to be taken in than the back. I'm real curious, why this is happening like this, I don't know. Again, it could be just part of how the pattern was made for fitting it to yourself um, in the 30s because there was a whole direction sheet supposedly on fitting this dress, but you know, we don't have that, so we're just making it. Um, and we're making it work, so it totally works out. This is the great thing about knowing how to sew is that when problems like this happen, you know exactly what to do and it doesn't become the end of the world. So let's go sew this up. Okay, we've got it all taken in. So we have two 
important steps left. We have hems and we have the neck facing. And then we finally get to try it on. This has been quite the adventure sewing this dress. So let's go finish it and get our reward trying it on. Here it is, we finished it. Oh my gosh. So let's talk about all the little details on the dress and the things we ran into creating this dress from the 30s. This dress pattern is so old. It's over 80 years old. Can you even believe it? I can't, but okay. So we've got these beautiful pleats in here, which wreaked havoc. Remember Fire Mountain? That was a whole thing. Um, but they ended up working out really nice. And then they release here, creating this volume, which I love down here. And then we have this really fun piece up here where the stripe ends up going on an angle. And then this piece flips back or in the design, it also had it. So it folds over and you can put a button over here. Um, but you know what? I really expected that flap to be just bigger and a little more dramatic and high fashion. And it's not. Um, so I'm just going to leave it open like a little lapel. Um, and then I chose to do the short sleeve version with a little bit of a puff in the sleeve. And then remember, we had that hidden dart on the front bust. And then we ended up having gathers in the front waist and in the back waist, which was really hard to tell on the pattern, even though they didn't line up and there wasn't darts. So it's kind of like, OK, what do we do with this volume here? Right. Because we don't have the instruction sheet, but we made it work. Um, we've got that beautiful zipper in the back and the dress in the back is just nice and smooth in the skirt and just has those two darts here. And then that is our dress. This is our dress from 1939. Can you believe that we sewed this up? Here's the dress on 1939. Can you believe it? So we kept all the details true except the length because I held the pattern up to me and it was to the floor. The pattern makes it seem like it's right below the knee, but this pattern was to the floor. Let me grab it. So this pattern was actually gown length, crazy, right? And I decided if I was gonna hem it anyways, why not make it Anastasia length? We kept all the other details true to the pattern, except the length. This dress makes me feel fancy. It's so fun to know that I can wake up in the morning and put on such a really fun, cute silk dress. And it's fancy and dressy, but it's not like over the top dressy, like you're going to prom or a wedding or something like that. It's still casual enough that you could, you know, pair it with flats, sneakers, dress it down, or, you know, you can dress it up as well. That's the fun part about fashion is you can really take your look and play with it and make it your own. So this dress is 1930s, but my style is not 1930s, but that's totally okay because now it's Anastasia style. This dress was a labor of love today, and I would love to know what you thought of me sewing up this 1930s dress pattern. Did you like the video? Would you like to see more vintage sew ups like this? Yes, no, leave it down below, be honest. And if you enjoyed the video today, make sure you give it a thumbs up, give it some applause, and let me know what you thought of it. Leave it down below, please. And don't forget to subscribe to Sew Anastasia and hit the notification bell, because that is the only way you're gonna find out when all my new videos come out every week is when you hit that notification bell. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, all the social media. So that way we can stay connected and creative together. And don't forget, I teach sewing classes in my design studio in Chicago, Illinois, and I teach them virtually as well. So check those out at sewingastasia.com and we can sew together all the time. So we're thinking about creating a whole virtual sewing 101 series that you can log on to and take the classes whenever you want. And this is gonna cover so many different topics zippers, hems, finishes, all the good stuff. And I'd love to know if you're interested in it. And if you are, leave a comment down below and let me know. Or if there's a specific class that you would like to see virtually or in person, leave that down below too, because I would love to create that for you. Cause sewing's awesome and I love it. And I could sew all day, every day. And I wanna create things that you love. Thanks so much for watching, bye.